The debate over immigration and border security is once again intensifying. That's right. The southern U.S. border with Mexico is seeing record numbers of migrants being apprehended. Officials in El Paso, Texas, have a new mobile migrant processing center to better accommodate the large numbers they're seeing there. It's only been open for about a week and has a, a relatively primitive setup. CBS News national correspondent Manuel Bajorquez toured the facility today. He joins us with more. Manny, what did you see when you toured this new mobile processing center? Well, just to give you a lay of the land, that is the border wall right there. Mexico on the other side. On the other side of that, also the Rio Grande. Shallow enough at this point that people are able to walk through and present themselves to Border Patrol to try to stay in this country to claim asylum. Inside there, they are telling us they had to set up tents to deal with the high number of migrants and asylum seekers that are coming through this area. So there are stations where they do biometrics to make sure that people are who they say they are and try to weed out anybody who may have warrants against them, but also a medical tent to try to deal with anybody who is dealing with exhaustions or injuries from their trip, and also a place where they get water and food as they are being processed. They then go to a central destination where they can try to make that claim of asylum, the credible fear claim that many uh, are calling it. Many of the migrants in there say they are from Venezuela, from Cuba, from Nicaragua. Just to give you a sense of the sheer numbers here, uh, the officials on the ground are telling us that there's averaging about 1,500 migrants coming through this sector of the border a day, and about half of them are from Venezuela. Wow. It's, it's crucial for you to give us this type of insight, Manny, because the, the folks that are there are the center of this heated political debate between Democrats and Republicans. They're getting bust. They're getting planed around the country. There are opinions all over the place. But what are they telling you? When you speak with them about the experience they've had before they get to this border crossing and what this moment feels like for them now. The majority of the people, especially those from Venezuela, are telling us that they've been on the road for about a month now, walking through the Darien Gap, that very dangerous stretch of jungle in Panama, uh, seeing even dead bodies, they say, along the way. So there's definitely a degree of trauma. But one young man I spoke with said, we are willing to risk our lives to do that journey where we could die, where we may not be allowed into the United States because the political and economic situation in Venezuela is just so bad that they don't want to lose their life there. They're willing to take that chance. They are also hearing from relatives here in the United States uh, that they can claim asylum and, and be allowed in at least to go to a court proceeding. There's no guarantee at this point that they will be allowed to stay in the country permanently, but they're willing to take that chance. How much they've risked mm -hmm. such uncertainty. But we know that this is also something that is hotly politically debated. Manny, how's that situation at the border playing out uh, in in terms of what you're hearing regarding the politics of immigration and border security. Well, as more migrants come in, you know that this will become an intensifying political debate. You have the GOP and governors of some of these border states that are saying that this can be tied directly to what they call Biden and his administration, the president being weak on border security and immigration. Many have decried uh, the end of MPP, the um, stay in Mexico program, as some called it, under the Trump administration that required people to stay on the other side as they waited for court appointments. But many said that program was putting people in danger, living in squalor and in dangerous situations just on the other side of the border, uh, which is why some Democrats wanted it to be gone. But the president made this point yesterday that the country of origin for many of these migrants is really changing. Again, Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, these are nations with, with strange relations or no diplomatic ties with the United States. So they are not easily deportable. They can't just send them back. And he said that sending people back into those situations in those countries was, quote, not rational. But again, the politics playing out here because you have GOP governors saying these border towns are overwhelmed. You have to do something to control these numbers, and that's why they're trying to send people north. But then you have criticism saying that if you are trying to get people to relatives in big cities and to court appointments, for example, you don't need to be sending them to Martha's Vineyard, as Florida's governor has been criticized for doing. Uh, a very good point there, Manny. And it underscores how the real underlying issues when it comes to the border and border crossings and border security involves 
other nations, geopolitical events, and instability elsewhere, which is no quick or easy fix. Uh, Manny Bajorquez, thank you so much. Joining us from El Paso, 